Greenhouse gases life cycles for EV cars. Everybody wants to know what is the greenhouse effect of an electric car. I know there's zero tailpipe emissions, but everybody's saying, well, it costs to mine the battery, uh, production and all that stuff, and then the recycling. And what's all that about? We're going to take a look at that today. My name is George and welcome to Go Green Hub, where what we do here in this channel is we discuss all things going green to try and save the environment and give everybody a choice. So what is a life cycle of a greenhouse gas? That is from where you just harvest, let's say you're drilling for oil, and that oil comes out of the ground, it goes to a refinery, and then it goes to a truck, it gets distributed, it goes to the gas station, and then it goes into your car and that's where it gets burned. That is the life cycle of that oil. Now, what about the life cycle of an electric vehicle? Okay, what do we have there? So the life cycle of an electric vehicle is, again, they're going to have to harvest some kind of raw materials out of the ground, you know, the iron, the aluminum, and yes, the battery is going to have the cobalt, the iron, the lithium, all that stuff, whatever they're making batteries out of at the time. They have to get that out of the ground. Then the life cycle, then it's transporting it to a place where they can actually transform that material and make it into the usable parts like into a whole battery or into a body frame that kind of stuff all right then after that of course we drive it and then after we drive it then it gets recycled the oil and gas does not get recycled that stuff just goes up in the air the car will get recycled the engine the seats the tires all that stuff that's going to get recycled anyways but as far as the electric vehicle goes there is no recycling of the carbon emissions that come from oil the electric vehicle it's using electricity um hey you could say that there's regenerative braking and we're going to do a video on that so stay tuned for that we have a chart here that's called the life cycle of ghgs which is greenhouse gases for an electric vehicle in a gasoline car it compares that now this chart here came from a company called argon and their energy systems and infrastructure analysis company and we'll get into that in just a little bit but what we want to set the baseline here is this is chart is based on 2022 a regular car not a gas guzzler but not a super efficient car because everyone can say and argue that hey my car gets good gas mileage or i drive this and it's fantastic so you know there's a lot of ifs ands and buts and we're just going to say for illustrative purposes just to give you something to think about because there are some greenhouse gases that are associated with electric cars they don't come out of the tailpipe but in the manufacturing and all that, that they exist. So what's first? Looking at this graph here, on the left part of the graph, you will see a gasoline car. And on the right side of the gra graph is an electric car. And there is a legend here. So the blue would be the battery. And these are the greenhouse gases that are associated with the battery. The orange, okay, those are other manufacturing and end of life. And what that means is the blue represents the battery, as we just said. The orange bars encompass the rest of the vehicle manufacturing. Example of that would be extracting materials, manufacturing and assembling other parts, and the vehicle assembly of itself. And, of course, the end of the life recycling or disposable of, uh, of that part of the car, okay, of, the, of those things. Now, next is the gray bar, and that represents the upstream emissions associated with producing the gasoline or electricity. The feedstock, that is what feeds taking oil out of the ground or mining stuff. That's, that's the stuff that is needed in order to start the production. That's, that's the very start. So what that means is taking the oil out of the ground, refining it, distributing it, and getting it to the gas pump, or the electricity for that matter. Taking it, um, if it is you know coal-based and they're running some kind of generator, or is there a wind turbine farm, or is there just a solar a solar farm someplace? And with the solar farms, you know, hey, look, that took energy to get that 
built to get it installed and continuous to maintain it and have somebody operate it. So there is some uh, there's some stuff that goes with that, but it's really not a lot. And then finally, let's just take a look at the yellow, the golden yellow. And what that is, is that is actually the CO2 emissions coming out of the tailpipe of this 2020 basic decent car and this is based on 300 miles all right that's what this chart is based on so the electric vehicle and the gasoline it's based on 300 so if you look at the chart and you take a look at this well so what does that all that mean for you that means that you can probably rest assured having an electric vehicle you'll have far less carbon output than you would driving a gasoline car. And for me, what I appreciate the most about the electric vehicles is really not having to stop at the gas station during the day, because that's effort on my part. Coming home or at a place, parking a little bit farther away, plugging it in and walking, the walking is good exercise, but plugging in at night at the house, the benefit of that is it's just forget it. And I can do my dishes, cook, sleep, all that while the car is charging. It's not actually time out of my day Whereas in the car that is. And going towards developing or to produce the electric energy, yes, there's greenhouse gases, but you know, as more things become electric, as the power plants become more efficient, as the solar arrays, the wind turbine farms, as they get larger, they're going to become more efficient. They will produce more energy per CO2 emission, basically. So if you're looking at an EV, hey, you know what? You're in the right spot. Go ahead and don't go ahead and buy it. I mean, you know, it'll have less CO2. Doesn't matter what anyone's going to tell you. My name is George. Again, thank you for watching. If you have a comment, please leave it below. Like and subscribe. Of course, we always like that. And have a fantastic day. And I hope that this was useful for you.